Good. Any good ones? Nothing. A little bit of knife work can't fix. You have to cram it in there. You didn't have it this good even in life. What our sauce. Oh wow. Looks so good. Good smoking temperature. Make sure it's not too hot underneath it. They look beautiful. I've been dreaming about that for a long time. I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Fowler's Makery of Mischief. Yeah. All right. Twas the night before hunting and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, because it didn't dare do. Tomorrow, we're going goose hunting. Got to do a little bit of prep work, though. This is the Seneca, whatever, double barrel shotgun that they make, 50 caliber. Gotta lay all this stuff out and then pack it back up in the safe and then get it back out at four in the morning. I'm gonna go over and meet Aaron. I'll introduce you to him. And we're gonna get some geese. I am super psyched about this. I've only done geese hunting, goose hunting, Canadian goose hunting once before up in Canada. And the Widow Bearsman and I weren't successful. The next day the geese did come in, but I had already gone back to the US at that point. So this will be finally knocking another thing off my bucket list. We got our air shells for this. But this is like an eighth of the amount of the BBs that are in a three inch shell, much less a three and a half inch shell. So the smallest you can use for turkey and geese is 0.9. And uh, they have to be steel because they'd be over water. I would have loved to have been able to purchase in time some tungsten because they're heavier than steel. So it brings you a little bit more hitting power like lead. But we'll build some out of the steel that I was able to purchase. And look at the difference between the size of the steel and the size of that that pheasant round there, and that'll help us get ourselves a goose. Oh, now we gotta separate them. <laughs> 13, 14, 20, 21, 31 through two, 33, 37, 37. Then you got a little cap that goes on there. These don't have any powder or anything to them. And when I shoot them out of here, the air rifle has air cylinder here, we'll fill this up. The shells go in the top here, blows her up, and then you can turn it from one barrel to the next. You can't just unload both barrels. You've got your half cocked and you got a full cock. We're definitely full cocked. And when I was sighting it in, I found that as these shells go out, because there's no powder behind them, the air presses them out and then there's a choke here at the end, which when they hit that choke, it squeezes the plastic shell and they blow up which means we have a lot more flyers than I think a regular shotgun shell. So at 20 feet, I was finding I was getting about 20 shots inside of that one foot diameter. It only takes one, so when I hit our goose, if I get it with this at 20 feet away and I get the opportunity to use it, it'll take one of those shots and he'll be down and we'll be able to do our catch and cook. Otherwise, we're taking my new, per Aaron's advice, he's like, if I, I said, if I can get any gun, in the world, what should I get? And he said his dream gun was the Frankie Affinity. And I ended up getting the Frankie Affinity 3.5. Did some testing with it. I thought I'd try this red dot thing out. So I'll bring that with me, the Frankie, and let's put some air in it. Before we get into the rest of the video, I'd love to introduce you to our sponsor for today's video, Fabric. Fabric offers a life insurance like no other. It's extremely affordable, extremely easy to do. In less than 10 minutes, you can sign up. If you watched one of my earlier videos during the motorcycle series, I signed up in less than 10 minutes myself, got life insurance to protect my family, and now my family's grown a little bit bigger since Sarah and I got married, and I just wanna make sure I'm taking care of them, and you can make sure you're taking care of your family with fabric as well, just in case something happens to you. I get out there on all kinds of adventures, whether I'm hammocking up there in the Rockies with Greg and grizzly bears hanging out down below us, or you're just stepping out your door and you slip on an icy patch. You don't want to leave your family in the lurch. Fabric's got you covered. Fabric by Gerber Life was designed by parents for parents to help you get high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policies in less than 10 minutes. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash Fowler. That's meetfabric.com slash Fowler. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash Fowler.
Boom. If I get that good shot at 20 feet, I'll have a goose with the air rifle. If not, we got the Frankie Affinity. That takes three shells, and I think you got some good range on that. I think it's time. I'm all ready to go. And I just gotta find my long johns, and uh, I'll see you at four in the morning. Puppy out. Coffee. <laughs> Safety's on, we're all good to go with that one. And then we got the air rifle. Safety's on, loaded, good to go. This is Aaron Hodgkins with Bear Proof Outdoors. We've been friends on Facebook for over a year now, and we finally had a chance to get together on this goose hunt. Aaron's a registered Maine guide, and quite a good one. So check out that link in the description below if you want to talk to Aaron about a hunting and fishing adventure. Oh, is that a crow? Yeah, it's a hawk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was gonna like dive in there and try to join you in the blind there for a second. He like swung right around that hawk. I think I'm more camouflaged by just going blonde instead of the, the hood. <laughs> it was like I already look like a bunch of uh, haystack that got turned over. <laughs> No geese yet, but can't see a thing through this at all. The sun, how bright it is. I don't know if this is just a cheap one or the battery already died. It came with a cheesy battery, but that's, that's a junk idea. I'll just go with the bead on the end. That's what I've always used in the past and I've done just fine. I might be cheating though too. And uh, I ordered some breakfast sandwiches uh, sent Sarah a message, say, hey, can you bring us some breakfast sandwiches? We've been making breakfast sandwiches with tomatoes and sprouts and stuff that I grew and all this yummy stuff. Oh, so Sarah's swinging by my house and making us some breakfast sandwiches. I, I thought we'd be done by now, it's like now almost by 8.30. Just finishing up my breakfast sandwich here. Sarah brought some breakfast sandwiches over. Thank you, hon.
that one. Watch him too. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna be like 20, 30 yards apart, basically. And we're just gonna move right down here. See that grass strip? Yeah. That should be, I saw the head down there last. We got one. Now we'll head down to the water, see if we can pick up two more that might have gone down. Yeah, I see him. Is he on this side of it? Right, this, this, this way. This way? Nothing? Nothing. Oh! Yeah, right there. There's <laughs> one. There's one. Good eyes, buddy. Oh, there we go. That one went right down, huh? Yep. Yeah, they'll go that far with a broken neck. Here we go. That's two. I think the other one picked up and flew out with the others, but I yeah, saw that this one. Yeah, probably was that movement, his, him moving along. Yeah. And the, the third one, that's all three. That's a big bull. Wow, that's a heavy one. That that's one. a big bull. Yeah. Yeah, wow. dude. Wow, those are good and down. <laughs> I've been pretty happy. Like I, I've only ever lost two yep. animals that I can count on. You know, like I mean, I've lost a ton of fish, but we're not counting fish, right? Right, right. So I've lost a uh, ground squirrel that I hit, and I was pretty sure I killed, but it went down into the hole and probably died. And then I've lost uh, one duck. We shot it, and then Woodbeardsman's like, "No, this way back to camp in the canoe." And I'm like, "No, it's this way," and I listen to him. By the time we got circled around, got to where camp really was, not to throw him under the bus, but it was his fault and <laughs> it was gone. Well, it's been an hour since the three that we got. Nothing else seems to be doing and we're not hearing them honking around. This place has been used before and it looks like even recently somebody had a blind just over there. So maybe we've taught them to stay away for now. I think we're gonna pack it up and go cook them up. Let's do this. All right, Sarah and I are out here in the woods again. We're looking for cranberries. We thought it would be fun to do some peaches from her house and some wild Maine cranberries. So hopefully we haven't missed it because there's been a couple little bit of frost and she's collecting some little stuff for her wreaths. And we'll make a cranberry peach goose thing going on. What do you see? Nothing? Yeah, they're still good. Oh, they're great. Look at how beautiful they're. Oh, there's so many of them. It's not gonna take us long to pick up what we need here. There's like this little pop. Yeah. Oh, nice pop. I expected it to be more bitter. Yeah, they're good. There's like hardly any sweetness whatsoever. Very strong cranberry flavor coming out of that cranberry. <laughs> this is pretty cool right here. Nature. Nature. Look at, so there's these deer prints right here, right? Right here. But if you see inside the print, in most of the prints, there's mushrooms growing. I don't think those are chanterelles per se, but I'm gonna take a couple back and check it out. But each of those deer prints, where the soil has been bruised, a mushroom is popping up. You can follow it right along the line. 
of print, print mushroom growing. And right along the way, how cool is that? Any good ones? Nothing, a little bit of knife work can't fix. There we go, peaches, perfect. All right, we got our peaches and then some. Let's head back, get a fire going, and smoke and roast that goose to perfection. Some cranberry peach glaze. Whew, it's gonna be good. Who's hungry? Who's hungry? I'm hungry. You're hungry. Hey, you guys are lucky you're off the menu today. But you better start laying some duck eggs. Otherwise, you're back on the menu. We did pretty good. We got quite a few of our peaches and look at all of the cranberries. That is gonna make some nice multiple meals, I think. Make a lot of cranberry sauce and our duck is ready to go. I brined it overnight and there's still just a couple of pin feathers. I don't know if it's worth removing, but I remember the other day when Sarah and I did the duck from the Catch and Cook Garden duck video, just some of those pin feathers kind of, it was worse on that one because it was younger. It really, it ruined the skin for eatability and I want this to be like a glazed and tasty crunchy skin on the outside. It's going to be awesome. Paragon. Beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. Some sage. Tarragon. Stuff that right in there. Always time for time. One rosemary. Get it right there in the middle. Celery. All this stuff inside we're not gonna eat. It's just in there for herbal aromatherapy inside of the uh, our goose. These giant green onions. Cranberries. I just want to get them open to see if there's any issues with them. Not particularly want any bugs. Oh, they look good. Got to cram it in there. I'm gonna have to get a needle and thread. I'll be right back. Isn't that annoying? There's always certain things that you get 
that you have in your kitchen and you use them once every year or two years, three years, and you go to look for it and it's like, where did it go? Where did it go? Well, you can always take a 16 penny nail, cold pound it, drill a hole in it, and you're good to go. Just gonna stitch her up. That'll work. So obviously, right now that's not hot enough and it's kind of windy out here, but I want it to smoke and cook. And uh, we gotta put some herbs and salt and pepper and stuff like that on the outside. And then, uh, then we're gonna build a little teepee over it so it cooks. Just gonna massage the goose with some olive oil so the salt and pepper sticks to her. Oh, oh. Yeah. she didn't have it this good even in life. This seems seems a little wrong. Salt, some pepper. So I'm gonna slow cook it for a while. Slow cook slash smoke it, and then at the end, I'll raise the temperature a bit and let it finish cooking to the proper. Uh, like 160, 165, I think. Oh, this is gonna be good. Tell me that's not the only thing I have to make these. Wait, that's like, this is like the cheesiest cold steel <laughs> machete, whatever. I just need to make a couple poles for my TP for the smoker. Feel. Like a pirate, like hardy mateys with the mayor. You are not a pirate. This thing is off. warm. It's a good smoking temperature. Small amount of flames. Make sure it's not too hot underneath it. There. Nice. Yeah. That should be good for, I'll give it like two hours, three hours like that. And then turn up the heat. 
In the meantime, we'll get our cranberry peach glaze sauce ready to go after the smoking. Pop that on there and finish the cook. It's been a little while since we've had some fun with the slingshot on camera. Threw some new speed shooter tubes on the old Hornet and uh, she is ready to go. Let's see if I am still able to shoot stuff out of there. I thought maybe it would be kind of fun. Do a little bit of a cranberry versus slingshot for a minute while we're waiting for that to cook. I'm using clay for those of you that are wondering and if you've seen that uh, I'm not doing the trick shot Tuesday anymore. Trick shot Tuesday. I just haven't. I don't know, I've been busy with other things, getting married, you know, that kind of stuff, and still shoot here and there, and gotta get back into it though, because I really wanna do more with it. It's like, it is my peace and zen time, and uh, without doing it every day the way I used to, or at least often, I feel a little bit of something of me is missing. And I think you guys do too, because I see it in the comments all the time. And if you have picked up a slingshot and you still haven't gotten very good with it, make sure you check out that on FowlersMakeryMischief.com how to shoot a slingshot page. You'll be shooting and hitting things pretty accurately in no time and you'll be able to build on that to be as accurate as I am someday. It's already happened for a couple people and I've competed against them and lost to them. So, there you go. Oh, that was a close, close call. Smacked it! I think that was about 15. <laughs> a little rusty. I feel so good. I gotta stop slacking and get outside more with my slingshot. Nope, not two in a row. What are you laughing at? You could be next. They're not next. I just, just to keep them in line. Move back to cans now that I've uh, sighted in on a cranberry. Boom! Hit! Miss! Sloppy! Boom! Two! Can we get three? Three! Three! Ah, 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 ah! How about accuracy? Do I still got that? There you go, a couple cans, and then a couple ah, rolling cranberries. There we go. Going with the gold hornet for the accuracy. Start with the left can. Work our way to the right. That was a little premature. Going too far to the right. All right, cranberry time. Going far left, closest to the GoPro. I don't know if that GoPro is safe. I used to feel pretty confident about GoPros being safe in front of my shooting, but... Oh! Still got it.
There we go. Uh-oh. Last shot. Oh, just missed it. Mm. Those are good. Woo, look at that. Would you look at that? I would say, how about our sauce? Oh, wow. Looks so good. So if you noticed, there's some ash all over the top of the wood. I brought my ash bin out from inside and I've been using that as my way of keeping the fire down low. As it starts to flame up too much, a little ash on top makes it kind of smolder and slowly burn from underneath, get less flames. I want heat and smoke, not flames on my goose here. That is looking pretty darn snazzy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. I think that's the best thing I've ever made. Now let's see if it tastes like the best thing I ever made when I put it on the goose. I'm steaming away. Oh, they look beautiful. I think Swiss chard was like one of my favorite things that we made in the garden outside of kale for our smoothies after the workout. It was like, it just grows so well and it's still out there. It's all over the place. I really want to figure out how to do a Four Seasons greenhouse of some sort because uh, just such a beautiful plant. It's frosted, doesn't even show a hint of uh, abuse from the frost. And it tastes so good. My mom, she is obsessed with Swiss chard. She eats like a pound and a half or two pounds a day of Swiss chard. Every morning has her big bowl of Swiss chard. And I, I see why now, because I love it. I love it. There you are. Hello, hon. Hey. So we got our, I got uh, Swiss chard. Yeah. And I made a tomato caprese. We still have tons of tomatoes out there. So I did it, uh, I think that's tomato caprese, right? I used like an olive oil with uh, from TJ Maxx with uh, basil in it oh. and salt and pepper. So mm -hmm. it's like pre-mixed, a little bit of that. And the goose has the peaches and mangoes. I cooked them down and then just just slathered oh, it with it. So you see it all, good. you see it all over there. It's just flavor just mm -hmm. all over it. And I made us two cobblers. This one is plain with the cranberries and peaches and then a crumble top. This one I put uh, habaneros in oh. <laughs> and, and mixed it all in and then Dude, cooked ice cream for that. I cooked it some more on the fire. So I thought that would be really delicious. That cobbler. Oh, I hope it's super spicy and super sweet. 
goose looks. Look at that red. Looks a little on the dry side right there, but that is the first thin slice. Get into her. Looks pretty dry. Take this piece right here and I'll uh, cut it in half. Ready? Mm -hmm. Say grace. Lord, thank you for the successful harvesting of these geese and uh, my friend Aaron who took me out there and brought his gear so we could do this. Uh, bless this food to our body in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeehaw. What are you going to try first? The goose. The goose? You going to try the piece with the skin? Um, no. It's got the peach glaze. <laughs> no. I'm going for the skin. Mine mm. has a little skin on it. Mmm. Wow, that smoky flavor. Mmm. It almost tastes like a fresh beef jerky, if anything. Not not like a not like chicken or duck. Have you tried the cauliflower? Mm-hmm. Is it spicy? Um. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that is very spicy. It's so mm. perfect. It's I really good with the with the goose. In the cranberry and mm -hmm. the. Mmm. Mmm. With the goose. That's the way to do it. And I, I was half thinking that I might have screwed up by adding the peaches and the cranberries together, but mm. that's a win. Yeah, the cranberries, good. That's a win. That's a lot of butter. Did you get some on yours? Mm -mm. I don't know. <laughs> it's cold out here, though. Mm. It's, <laughs> and it's not melting. <laughs> butter popsicle. Mm. Mm -mm. That turned out amazing. I could see why people say they breast them out a lot and then just grind it up with some you know, pork fat and things and make a burger. I'll have to do that for another one. I think this is pretty successful though. Mm. Um, I can't wait to try the burger. I kind of want to go all like uh, biking on the leg. <sighs> we might as well try that. Get it off of there. There we go. Leg. Now this peach mm. cobbler with the peppers, you could make that into a jam. Mm. Wouldn't that be good? Ooh, that leg is delicious. Maybe the way to win would have been smoking it and then wrapping it like you do a rack of ribs. You smoke them for a little bit and then you wrap them and smother it with butter and, and uh, brown sugar and stuff like that. I think that would have allowed it to juices to come back out and suck back in and but it got a really good. Well, I'm pretty happy with this. Thank you, Aaron, for taking me out there and uh, teaching me about goose hunting and getting me on the goose, the geese, and sending me home with some more. I got some more goose that I bagged and put in the freezer. And uh, we're married now, so she steals from me all the time. And I, no wonder I'm getting so skinny. Like, <laughs> she just keeps taking all my food. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some more goose left over from this because Aaron sent me home with all three of the birds. Thank you again, Aaron. And uh, I bagged it and processed it as breast. You may have seen that if you've seen the processing video linked below. I bagged the breast of the other two and some other cuts of those. And I'll probably bust those out at some point once we're done with the Catch and Cook Kitchen and we start that new channel and make some burgers. Try out some other stuff for this goose. Thanks for watching. That's it for me and Sarah. Fowlers out. You didn't chime in. I'm sorry. I was still, still <laughs> stuck on how you love to say the word breast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I missed my cue. You ready? All right. Sure. <clears throat> Fowler's out. All right. We got to count it down. I can't do how it. did we do it before? Like, we didn't even mean to. We just automatically did it. We'll just yeah, skip to. Fun when it's not... That was completely spontaneous. All right. We'll just cut to that scene and uh, end it on there. Okay. Fowlers, Fowlers. out. <laughs>